Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, many people tell us that the Athens Democracy Forum in its ninth year has become an institution. That may be the case, and the main reason for that is that we're holding it here in the birthplace of democracy in the city of Athens. And we have the unrelenting support of the mayor of Athens, Mr. Costa Bakoyanis. Mr. Bakoyanis is a great follower and, and supporter of the Athens Democracy Forum. Every year he bestows the City of Athens Democracy Award. So I would like to invite you, Mr. Mayor, for the 2021 City of Athens Democracy Award. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Athens. Our city takes great pride in being the birthplace of democracy. The very belief that demos, the people, are the basis of kratos, loosely understood as power, was developed literally a few hundred meters from where we stand. And thousands of years later, we still refuse, we refuse to take democracy for granted. On the contrary, we join forces with all those around the world who fight against the forces of darkness and champion the, the universal values and belief that the Acropolis symbolizes. The City of Athens Democracy Award is an annual recognition of those profiles and courage who lead our collective struggle. In this year's Athens Democracy Forum, we are privileged to honor Ms. Y.Y. Nu, a tireless defender and advocate of human rights, whose strength, conviction, and passion has served as an inspiration for millions and millions of people around the world, especially the young. A member of my Mars Rohingya minority, she was imprisoned at the age of 18. She was at the time at her second year in law school. And she was imprisoned simply for being the child of a political activist with an original sentence of 17 years. She was released seven years later and decided to continue her studies and earn her law degree in Myanmar, later obtaining a, master, a master's degree in law from the University of Berkeley. A model of adaptability, adaptability and resilience, Ms. Y.Y. Nu has managed to become an uncompromising advocate for the rights of the marginalized Oiga community and a fearless defender of human rights in her country, her region, and across the world. She's the founder and executive director of the Women's Peace Network in Myanmar, which aims to secure peace and mutual understanding among Myanmar's ethnic communities whilst empowering and defending the rights of marginalized women throughout the country. She has also founded the Yangon Youth Center, which by bringing young people from diverse backgrounds together, actively engages youth in the peace building process and helps mold the leaders for a better, more open, and more inclusive tomorrow. This year, as we all know, Myanmar has experienced a devastating military coup with hundreds of people dead and thousands of political prisoners, further demonstrating the need for Ms. Nu's voice to be heard even louder and even wider. Ms. Pai Vai Nu, I have the great pleasure to bestow on you the City of Athens Democracy Award for your awe-inspiring work championing freedom and democracy for the people in your country and around the world. You suffered imprisonment in your teen years and came out of it even stronger and more confident in your beliefs, having witnessed the plight of the other prisoners that are deprived of their freedom because of an oppressive and unjust regime. You shone a light and continue to do so on the marginalization of women throughout your country, especially those belonging to ethnic minorities, which, as we all know, are amongst the most vulnerable. And through your acts of defiance in the face of oppression, 
you commanded the respect of all of us, of the whole of the international community, with your work serving as a blueprint for addressing persistent social divides and ultimately helping bridge them. You have said, actually, that you are not free because your community is not free, because your country is not free. And your words are a reminder of our collective duty to not give up, to not give up until we have given a voice to the voiceless, power to the powerless, and hope to the hopeless. On behalf of the city of Athens, I have the great honor tonight to salute you for your strength, your commitment to your cause, and for your loyalty to your people. Your influence is undeniable, and I'm more than confident that you will continue to be a stalwart activist for peace, freedom, and democracy, affecting change where and when it's needed the most. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your kind introductions and thoughtful remarks. It is indeed my honor to receive this esteem award. I'm grateful to the City of Athens, the New York Times, the United Nations Democracy Fund, and the Athens Democracy Forum. I understand that this award is given to me for, the promote, uh, for promoting democratic values and leaderships among youth, empowering youth and women, including members of the Rohingya community, to resist the ongoing repressions of the democracy and human rights in Myanmar. This recognition from the birthplace of democracy means a lot to me. It gives me hope and further inspirations to promote democratic values. Today, I am so humbled to have the opportunity to share my story and experience in our democracy, our democracy struggle in Myanmar. Nine years ago, as you mentioned, I was behind bars in Myanmar, a teenager thinking about the reason I was in prison and realizing that it wasn't my fault, but the dictatorship which targeted my family for being Rohingya and for my father's political leaderships in Burmese democracy movement. Since I was a kid, I was no stranger to the democratic struggle in Myanmar. However, I came to understand more deeply how dictatorship was impacting the life of people in Myanmar, especially younger people. Facing the prospect of losing my future to 17 years of imprisonment, I promised myself that I, will, I would work on changing the system so that no young person has to suffer because of their family members or ethnic identity or political beliefs. In January 2012, after spending almost seven years of my youth in prison, I was released as part of the presidential amnesty during what was called a democratic transition. While I was hopeful, hopeful up, upon my release, I was quickly, I quickly realized our so-called transition wasn't democratic, but heading to somewhere dangerous. I was horrified by the increase in hate speech and violence against Rohingya and other Muslims. While Rohingya had long suffered discrimination attack against, attack against Rohingya in 2012 that led to the internment of over 100,000 and a growing anti-Muslim movement throughout the country made me more frightened for the safety for my community than I had ever been in my lifetime. Here I was, free from prison, during what was being celebrated as a transition to democracy, but not feeling very free. Democracy, I knew, could not be founded on exclusion. Rohingya were not only one, the one, the, uh, Rohingya were not the only one suffering. Myanmar is the home to a vast array of ethnic and religious communities, 
But rather than embracing its diversity, the military has long attempted to stifle it and denying our rights and waging war, against, war on many ethnic communities. At the time I was released, fighting in Kachin state in the north of the country had escalated. Civilians were being displaced and killed. Additionally, it's quickly become evident that democratic transition was not um, as democratic as many inside and outside the country had hoped. The military retained a number of power under 2008 constitutions and continued to wield its weapons against its own people virtually unchecked. Against this backdrop, I tried everything I could to promote democracy and human rights by starting Women's Peace Network to elevate the voice of the marginalized communities, including Rohingya women, domestically and internationally, and the Yango Youth Center to provide a range of trainings on democracy and human rights and organizing a campaign we called My Friend Campaign, which promote tolerance and non-discriminations, encourage people all over the country to celebrate diversity so that we build an inclusive democratic future. The women and youth we work with were incredibly inspiring and continue to fight for democracy and human rights. We are proud of many of our alumni who are now leaders in fighting for democracy in Myanmar today. The changes we were trying to bring in the larger society did not become reality right away, however. Instead, we saw rights of Rohingya being further deteriorated. Rohingya were excluded from an UN-sponsored census. Identity documents were invalidated and confiscated, and the right to vote was denied. All the while, international governments, businesses, institutions continue to celebrate Myanmar's transitions and pump money into governments and military affiliated business. What many in Myanmar and around the world fail to see is that democracy cannot be built upon exclusion. I became increasingly occupied with advocacy while being targeted for threat intimidations and cyberbullying campaigns against me for speaking up. I warned diplomats, head of states and governments, representative of UN's, UN, UN agents, representative of UN agencies, and anyone who would listen that the situations for Rohingya was bad and at a great grave risk of getting worse. Nonetheless, after the elections of Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy in 2015, many inside and outside of the country were convinced that further democratic progress were a foregone conclusion. Even at the military wage brutal clearance operations in 2016, burning down villages, engaging in mass rape and torture, killing and killing, leading over 100,000 Rohingya to flat to Bangladesh. International com governments continue to lift sanctions and provide resources and other forms of support to the military and military affiliated companies. In 2017, mil the military did it again, this time on a much larger scale, resulting in thousands of death, displacement of thousands more, which the UN fact-finding missions report describes as elements of crimes against humanity and genocide. This unspeakable tragedy was entirely predictable and preventable. Had the members of the international community listened to Rohingya, they would have known that. Earlier this year, we with the rest of the world looked on with the horror as military shed the light, a shed the last pre pretext of commitment to democracy when it staged a coup, ousting the elected government. 
The military's attempt to regain absolute control has resulted in untold miseries for the people of Myanmar. But it has also sparked a democratic movement of, sort, of the sort that Myanmar has not seen in decades, if ever. People all over Myanmar are joining together to the tyranny and the violence of the military. Youth and many of whom I call friends and who I have worked with are now at the forefront of the democratic cause. For the first time in a long term, people from all different ethnic groups are supporting one another, including the Rohingya, who were for so long orchestrated um, orchestra, uh, orchestrates and stigmatized uh, so much so that people even refuse to say our name. Our country has a long way to go. The circumstances are currently incredibly grim as COVID and the military rule prove to be deadly combinations. But I do feel hope for the first time in a long time. Democracy cannot be flourished in Myanmar while the military continue to wage war against its own people with impunity. And this is what is happening. The military is fighting the people. The international community has the opportunity to support the people in our fight for democracy. The main way to do that is to stop supporting military or engaging military and enforce, enforce an arms embargo and support effort for accountability at the International Criminal Court and do not cooperate with or enrich the military's entity. Do not make the same mistakes again. Listen to the people affected or those fighting against oppressions. Finally, once again, I repeat that democracy cannot be built with the inclusions and impunity for human rights violations in Myanmar or anywhere else. Thank you.